Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles, and today we're going to be taking a look, now that you can buy your way into the closed beta test of World of Warships, purely and simply by purchasing one of the premium ship bundles from the Wargaming Premium Shop. I thought it was about time that I took a more in-depth look at uh, some of those ships that you can actually spend your money on, beginning with the Tier 4 Japanese light cruiser, actually an experimental light cruiser, the Yubari named after the Yubari River from Hokkaido in Japan. There are two different ways of getting your hands on the Yubari. You can either buy it individually or as part of the Light Fleet package on the Wargaming Premium Shop, which will cost you £36.15 or €49.99. If you buy the Light Fleet package bundle, you'll get not only the Yubari, you'll also get the Tier 7 American Destroyer, the USS Sims, and the Tier 5 Soviet Destroyer, the Gremyashki. Or alternatively, you can just buy the standalone Yabari, which will cost you £14.46 or 1999 euros, or whatever the equivalent is in your own currency, in your own version of the Wargaming Premium Shop. So, what the hell is the Yabari, and uh, why should you get it? Well, the Yabari was an experimental design for a light scout cruiser that would displace no more than 3,000 tonnes, but still have the same firepower and speed, of the heavier 5,000 ton cruisers like the Sendai class. And the Japanese naval architects actually came up with quite an innovative way of achieving that, much in the same way that Soviet aeronautical engineers managed to improve the armour and the speed of the Sturmovik while keeping the weight down. What the Japanese did was, rather than the traditional method of armouring a ship, where you build the steel hull and then you bolt the armour onto it, they actually incorporated the armour into the hull itself. Instead of having the traditional three or four smokestacks for its eight oil-fired boilers, they installed trunking systems to channel the exhaust fumes from the boilers into a single smokestack located centrally on the deck, which reduced the overall length required for the hull of the ship and freed up space on the deck for additional weapons. Only one Yubari was built, but it was considered a successful experiment, and lessons learned during the construction of the Yubari were incorporated into the design of future Japanese destroyers and cruisers. In fact, if you were to take a look at the funnel arrangement of uh, other Japanese heavy cruisers like the Megami or the Aube, you can quite clearly see the influence that the design of the Yabari had on the construction of ships like this. The Yabari that was commissioned into the Imperial Japanese Navy on the 23rd of July 1923 is significantly different from the Yabari that finally met its fate on the 28th of April 1944 when it was sunk by the American submarine, the USS Bluegill. When it was first built, the Yabari had six 140mm deck guns. The version that you see here in World of Warships only has four in two turrets. It does have three turrets, but that gun that you can see at the front is a single 120mm gun, and it's considered part of the secondary armament. What's significant about that 120mm gun is that it is a dual-purpose battery. It's not just a secondary gun battery, it's also an anti-aircraft gun, and the anti-aircraft firepower of the Yabari is what makes the ship special. Put quite simply, it has the best anti-aircraft armament of any ship in World of Warships, up to and including Tier 4. In fact, it has significantly better anti-aircraft armament than any of the Tier 5 cruisers. At Tier 5, only the Congo-class battleship and the Independence-class carrier have better anti-aircraft firepower than this Tier 4 light cruiser. Don't get too carried away about the admittedly excellent anti-aircraft rating of the Yabari, however, the vast majority of its anti-aircraft firepower comes from its batteries of 25mm anti-aircraft guns, and they are strictly for self-defence only. They're a very short-ranged anti-aircraft weapon. That doesn't mean you can't successfully escort other ships with the Yabari and protect them from air attack, but you have to stay pretty damn close to them. So why does the ship have such a formidable anti-aircraft defensive capability? And the simple answer to that question is because Experience proved that she needed it. On the 10th and 11th of March 1942, the Yabari was sailing as part of a task force that was coming on a continuous air attack from the USS Lexington and the USS Yorktown. Over the course of those two days, the Yabari managed to successfully dodge 67 bombs and 12 torpedoes, but the ones that hit inflicted severe casualties. 13 of her crew were killed and 49 were wounded. When she returned to Rabaul for repairs, she was immediately bombed by US Army Air Force B-17 Flying Fortress bombers. On two separate occasions, in early and late 1943, she was given additional anti-aircraft firepower. And on the 6th of November 1943, she embarked on one of the Tokyo Express resupply runs, taking 25 tonnes of supplies 
and 700 reinforcements to Japanese troops on the island of New Guinea. The timing of this particular Tokyo Express run could have been slightly better because unfortunately it coincided with Rear Admiral William Halsey's carrier raid on the Japanese stronghold of Rabaul, and on the 11th of November the Yabari was once again attacked and hit from the air, and then three days later again on the 14th of November. On the 19th of December she returned to Yokosuka in Japan for repairs and the installation of even more anti-aircraft guns. And that December 1943 configuration is the version of the Yubari that we have here in World of Warships. So, let's take a look at the old girl and see exactly what you're going to get for your money. First, combat capability, the armour. Don't get too carried away. I mean, I mentioned at the start of the video that they managed to save an awful lot of weight and space by basically building the hull out of the armour plating, rather than bolting the armour plating onto the hull. Yes, they did do that, but the armour on the Yabari is 57mm thick at best, and even that is purely around the citadel, the central section of the ship that contains all the things like the magazines and the boilers that don't react very, very well at all to fire and explosions. Elsewhere on the ship you're looking at 20mm of deck armour, which is terrible, and you're looking at 6mm of armour pretty much everywhere else. That would be badly armoured if it was a tank, let alone a warship. This is a light scout cruiser, your armour is not going to save you. As far as the guns are concerned, they're not bad. They're 140mm guns, it's got four of them in two turrets, so two barrels per turret. Now, this is a good thing, and it's a bad thing, because it means if one turret is pointing at the target, then two guns are pointing at the target. However, if you get a turret knocked out, you've just lost 50% of your firepower. They fire at a rate of 9.2 rounds per minute to a range of 128 kilometers, and it takes 24 seconds to rotate the turrets 180 degrees. The torpedo armament is nothing special. It gets four torpedo tubes mounted in two centerline mounted launchers, as you can see here. They take 63 seconds to reload after they've been fired. They only have a range of six kilometers, but they do travel at a speed of 63 knots. So that means that on those occasions when you do find yourself close enough something to launch a spread of torpedoes at them, they're going to have very, very little time in which to react. And these are the Japanese 610 millimeter torpedoes. They do over 14,000 damage. She has a top speed of 35 knots, and it only takes 5 seconds to turn the rudder all the way from port to all the way to starboard. This is a very, very manoeuvrable ship. However, don't let that manoeuvrability and speed fool you into thinking you're driving a destroyer. You're not. This is very definitely a cruiser. She'll be spotted on the surface from a range of just under 10 kilometers, and from the air from a range of 4.7 kilometers. But I don't really care if I get spotted from the air, because I'm in a Yubari. Bring it on, bitches. Have a look at this anti-aircraft firepower. She has eight single-barreled 25mm guns, four double-barreled 25mm guns, and three triple-barreled 25mm guns, and let's not forget that 120mm gun mounted in the turret on the front. So come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. That is what makes the Yabari special. Compared directly against the other Tier 4 Japanese cruiser, the Kuma class, um, the Yabari doesn't look that impressive at all. The Kuma has got significantly more guns, and they fire slightly faster. You could also argue that the torpedo armament on the Kuma is better. They have a longer range, but they're not as quick. But I guarantee you, if you ever come under air attack of the Kuma, and the Kuma's not a bad ship at all, but you'll wish you were in the Yubari. And in fact, anybody around you who comes under air attack is going to wish you were in the Yubari. So... Let's take a look at what she can do. Technically, this is a tier 5 match. And I say technically because, well, we have an Omaha and they have a Congo. The Congo on the enemy team must be looking at this lineup. The entire match is just chock full of tier 4 cruisers. And he's got to be thinking, om nom 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 nom. Oh, yes. The firing arc of the torpedoes on the Yabari is terrible. That was just, yeah. <laughs> To be honest, I have never actually hit anything with the torpedoes on this ship. All the damage I've done on this ship has been with the guns, which was surprising, because in a straight-up comparison, the guns on the Yabari are just not as good as the guns on the Kuma, but I have no problems whatsoever doing damage with the guns on this thing. Now, we're not the only Tier 4 cruisers in this match. There are actually five Yabaris, three on our team, two on the enemy team. They also have a Kuma. But they also have a pair of Awaki Alphas. What the hell's an Awaki Alpha? Well, it's the premium reward ship that was given to the Alpha testers, so they've got at least two veterans on the enemy team, as well as the Congo-class battleship, the only battleship in this entire match. 
The good news is that there are four aircraft carriers in this match. There are four Langleys, two on each team. And I know it sounds strange saying, yeah, good news, we're going to be attacked by torpedo bombers. <laughs> but trust me, when you're driving a ship that has a powerful anti-aircraft armament, you want there to be carriers on the enemy team. Remember the first time I unlocked my Cleveland Tier 6? The first three games I played, there were no aircraft. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was immensely frustrating. Uh, no such luck in this one, however. Lots and lots of lovely aircraft for me to shoot down. First two contacts spotted. Enemy cruisers in range. That is a Kuma. It looks like one of the enemy Ubaris is not far away from him. There it is. Well, they're both inside my gun range. So I'm going to start lighting them up. Two turrets, four guns. Two Our guns in each turret. Ranging shots fell short. Adjust my fire. Aim ahead of him. That's looking better. Yep. Minimal damage, but... And I've got the range now. But they're returning fire. And I'd already started swinging the ship around because I knew what was going to happen. Scored another hit. Again, minimal damage, but... Keeping them occupied, it's harassing him. And our carriers... Are sending torpedo bombers in their direction. Taking a small hit. There's another cruiser now closer to them than me. Hopefully that should draw their fire. He's obviously trying to get close enough to launch a torpedo spread. Come on. Turn on the rudder hard to starboard. Bring the ship around. Going to start focusing fire down on this Kuma. Try and take some of the pressure off that friendly cruiser up ahead who's launched his torpedoes and he is taking hits. And bingo. Citadel penetration. Maximum damage with an armor piercing shell. 3,020 damage. And again. Two hits that time. This guy's got to be thinking, why me? <laughs> There's another Citadel penetration. And of course. One more and he's dead. So what happens? We start doing minimal damage. <laughs> but come on. Come on. There we go. Four Citadel penetrations. Sunk him. Took minimal damage in return. This guy thinks he's going to hit me with his torpedoes. I really don't think so. I think that's another Yubari, actually. Judging by the funnel, he's taken significant damage. Not there, however. However, notice the flames coming out of his funnel. He's just taken a hit from somebody. It's knocked his engine out. He's now dead in the water. So he's just lost engine power, and there's a destroyer right next to him, and you know what that means? <laughs> Did you see that impact? The rear of the ship practically lifted out of the water. That torpedo hit him so hard. <laughs> so, decent result. We've knocked out two of their cruisers, but oh, great. While all that was going on, we've managed to lose two cruisers and a destroyer of our own. On the bright side, however... Oh, and there go the torpedoes. I mean, what chance did they ever have of hitting me? Seriously. <laughs> but anyway, on the bright side, we control B. We're now taking control of A, now that we've beaten off the cruiser assault that was contesting control of this uh, area with us. The enemy team are going to take C, of course. Um, we don't have anybody over there to take it, and it looks like they've got at least two ships sailing into that location but it didn't cost us too many ships in order to take these two flags so this is going to give us uh, a decent lead at the start of the match as long as we don't carry on losing ships don't forget the enemy team don't just gain points every time they sink one of your ships you lose points i have actually lost games where we outnumbered the enemy and we controlled two of the three flags and we were ahead on points by over 150 points all because the lightly armored cruisers that were all we had left on our team decided it was a fantastic idea to charge straight into the teeth of a three ship battleship squadron <laughs> which was what was left on the enemy team didn't work out very well for them enemy team ended up winning despite being so far behind Purely by virtue of killing everybody <laughs> other than me. I was the only person on the team who had the sense to not take a lightly armed cruiser up against a squadron of three battleships. You'd think it was obvious, but apparently not. Anyway, that looks like one of the Yubaris. He's seen the destroyer and he's turned the wrong way. He's going to run aground. Oh, and his engine's been knocked out. <laughs> oh, wait, no, he's repaired the engine. That's well he should. But he's now got a reverse 
off the rocks, and there are two spreads of torpedo. Oh no, I've killed him anyway. <laughs> You've got to wonder what's going through people's heads sometimes. You're steaming through a narrow channel, you spot an enemy destroyer. If I turn left, I'm going to run aground and be rendered completely immobile. If I turn right, I'm not. <laughs> so he turns left. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm certainly not complaining. Easiest kill I've ever had. Anyway, what's this? Uh, there's a cruiser over there, and he looks like he's on fire. And it looks like he's reversing. All right. Put some. Sh oh wait, no. He's put the fires out, and he's managed to get going forward again, which means those shots missed. So he's used his damage control ability, and he's taken fire from all kinds of different directions here. And he's managed to run it aground again. <laughs> no wait, he's managed to get underway. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, Citadel Penetration! I've set his engines on fire! <laughs> so, And I know he's just used his damage control ability, so that means he's unable to repair his engines. And he's rapidly running out of speed, and there are torpedoes closing in on him. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And that's one of the Iwaki Alphas, that's one of the Alpha Test veterans. And, yep, there he goes. <laughs> Next, a St. Louis. Now, the St. Louis may just be Tier 3, but that is a seriously well-armed ship. However, there's at least three of us shooting at him. And he's pointing straight towards me. Which... <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so much for the St. Louis. Anyway. What's this? It's a cruiser. And judging by the mast, it looks like a Phoenix or an Omaha. And it's got a gun turret in front, so that means it's the Omar. This is the Tier 5 American cruiser. Now, this thing is not bad at all. It is quite a significant threat. However, he's managed to sail into a crossfire from three different ships. He's focusing on the destroyer, which is the sensible thing to do, but I just did over 7,000 damage to him with two Citadel penetrations. I'm swinging the ship around for two reasons. One, he's inside my torpedo range, and two, it allows me to bring both gun turrets to bear on him. But that island is just in the wrong place. Now he's managed to sink the destroyer. Which means I am his next target. But I can use this island to conceal them. And another citadel penetration. This guy's taken a battering. And there are torpedo bombers coming in. Now this is great news. Now he is of course also armed with torpedoes. Both the Phoenix and the Omaha have torpedoes. And there you go, torpedoes in the water. But I saw that coming a mile away. I am not falling for that old gag. The Yubari is entirely capable of dodging torpedoes not putting shots into him and I'm shooting down fighter aircraft here. I'm not too concerned about them because they're just fighter aircraft. He on the other hand has got torpedo bombers to worry about. But that was not a particularly well aimed spread. He's managed to avoid them. I've got to keep putting the fire into this guy. I cannot afford to let him get away. My anti-aircraft batteries are opening up on that fighter squadron that's in the air above me. There it is. It's just fighters. I don't care about fighters. They're just free kills at this point. Need to kill this guy. Bingo. Got him. Tier 5 cruiser. Dead. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. Tier 5 cruiser? How can they have had a Nomar? They've got a Congo-class battleship. They had two Tier 5s. <laughs> as well as having the only battleship. Wow. And we're kick Well, we're not really kicking their asses. It's still pretty close. I mean, we're way ahead on points because we've held on to A and B. They've held C, and I'm actually considering going and taking C off them at this point. But... There's their battleship, that's the Congo, and um, we've spotted one of their carriers. I'm still just shooting down fighters here, it's just free experience at this point. What to do? We've got two other ships engaging these guys, but, well, that cruiser closest to me is not on particularly high health. Screw it. They're going to attack these guys. The Congo, armor-piercing loaded, or the Langley. Gonna be the Langley, I think. I've got AP loaded, I'm gonna switch to HE. The AP's in the barrel, I'll fire it off anyway. Might penetrate his landing deck and do damage to his boilers, I don't know. No, not particularly. But now I'm firing high explosive, and I'm firing high explosive because I wanna put his flight deck out of commission. I wanna set this guy on fire so he can't launch his torpedo bombers. And hope that these two guys are preoccupied with the other two cruisers that arrived on scene before me we're still shooting these fighters down. <laughs> Come on. 
scoring hits, but I'm not setting this guy on fire. That's what I need to do. And he's managed to launch a fresh squadron of torpedo bombers. However, some of them have been shot down. They don't have a lot of replacements on a Langley. So I hold down control and I click on those torpedo bombers and that focuses my anti-aircraft guns and secondary batteries on the torpedo bombers. So they're not going to be distracted by any fighter aircraft and start shooting them down instead. Now, we are very close to winning on points here, but I can still get more damage done. And if that carrier continues on that course and speed, he may run into this torpedo... Well, I say torpedo spread. The Yabori can only fire four torpedoes at once, but better than nothing. And they're throwing absolutely everything that they have at us. And I'm trying to stay as close as I can to this other cruiser so I can cover him with my anti-aircraft guns. Shot down all but one of the first squadron, switching fire to the second squadron. This is a full squadron, nailed one of them, which means they're only going to get five torpedoes in the water. You know what? That carrier driver did a pretty good job there. He manually dropped those torpedoes and fired them off at 90 degrees to each other, which gives the target the minimum possible chance of actually evading them. But we'd shot down so many of his aircraft that the cruiser in front managed to get away scot-free. Unfortunately, I'm now... Well, there, here it comes. <laughs> that was lucky. A Congo is entirely capable of one-shotting a Yubori-class cruiser. And it is going to take him 30 seconds to reload his guns, but I'm now in range of his secondary batteries. And I don't actually anticipate hitting this guy with these torpedoes, but it is going to scare him off. It's going to force him to turn away, which is going to reduce the amount of guns firing back at me and, oh crap, repair my engines, repair my engines, and keep me in the game long enough to do some more damage to this aircraft carrier. Come on. Come on, we're about to win on points. I'm no longer taking fire from the battleship. The torpedoes serve their purpose. He now can't point his gun turret at me. There he is, he's turned away, he's turned around the other side. Come on, come on, shoot down more aircraft, do more damage to the carrier, anything. Come on, and... He's going to recover these torpedo bombers, but we're nearly there on points. Set him on fire, a little bit too late, but it's all extra damage. Shooting down even more aircraft. And any second now, there you go, game over. So, how did we do in the Yabari? I have to admit, I was very pleasantly surprised. 273,000 credits, 4,500 experience, 4 kills, 9 citadel penetrations, 11 aircraft shot down, 66 hits. This thing only has 4 guns. <laughs> now, admittedly, that is with a premium account. Now that you can buy gold in the premium shop, I'm running with a premium account. However, base experience, tier 4 ship, tier 5 match, over 2,000. As for damage done, now don't forget, I didn't score a single torpedo hit in this match. My torpedoes can do 14,600 damage. Not one of them hit anything. All the damage done in this match was with my guns. 50,000 damage. That's not bad. That's the first game I ever played in this ship, and it's the best game I ever played in this ship. I don't expect to equal that kind of result for a while. Um, but significantly, the two Yabaris on our team were the guys in first and second position on experience earned. This is a very, very decent ship, particularly in a match where there are aircraft, because that's where this thing excels. I mean, 11 aircraft kills, and I wasn't even trying. <laughs> The 9 Citadel penetrations and the 50,000 gun damage didn't hurt either, but yeah, I, I like this ship. I like this ship a lot. Uh, I think this is uh, 14 pounds and 36 pence of my money well spent. I don't regret getting it for a second, and I'm looking forward to many, many more equally enjoyable games in the Yubari Tier 4 Premium Japanese Light Scout Cruiser. Hope you enjoyed the video, folks. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.